Uh, well, welcome, Dan. Can I um, welcome you to the uh, uh, Hui Aoha o Aotearoa, which is you. the New Zealand content part of the Global Fashioning Assembly. Um, I have invited ev invite everyone really to introduce themselves first. So, if you would do that, that would be great. Yeah, thanks, Doris, and it's it's amazing to be here. Um, Hello to everyone tuning in from around the world as well. Um, kia ora, talofalava, kia ora koto, katoa. Um, my name is Dan Awa. I am a fashion journalist. Um, and I've been a fashion journalist for probably, we're going through our notes okay. a, few years, a few weeks ago. It's 18 years, really. Ooh, yeah. So it's a mixture of writing and styling, but I'm based with the New Zealand Herald. and predominantly at the flagship fashion magazine, Viva magazine. Um, and I've been there since 2015, pretty much full time, but sort of uh, contracting over the years. And yeah, so I write and I style and fashion journalism is my beat. Yeah. And I had the fortune of actually collaborating with Doris on a really significant exhibition called Moana Currents, um, which we launched in 2019 pre COVID and it toured around Aotearoa. Um, and that was a really great um, connection with the museum. Yeah. So it's great to be here today. Yeah, it's great to have you. Yeah. Dan's um, just had a sneaky little holiday in Rarotonga. I have, I got back I this morning two at 2 a.m. So. He's had 12, 12 hours on land, he's okay. Yes. He's okay. But I'm okay. I'm okay. It's not Go that much no. time difference. No. Great. Yeah, so uh, why I uh, was um, particularly keen to have Dan come and talk is one of the themes that I uh, had hoped that this, uh, this assembly could, uh, could talk to indeed is that, that, that question that I asked Janine too, you know, how um, can people who work in the decolonial fashion space make a living? Um, you know, how, how, how is that how can we sort of elevate that or put it into um, into the uh, I suppose sort of collective consciousness? You know that the um, that fashion is not just white uh, runways from um, from Paris or fashion magazines or the shop front. That fashion is what we all do every single day, and that it, it is inclusive that we're all fashion practitioners um. yeah um so over the years i think janine before us she was a trailblazer really um i think back to when we worked together on cult couture um and even before then your career really influenced a lot of young up-and-coming um, pacifica creatives like myself um, the pacific sisters obviously there's a huge sense of Polynesian pride in New Zealand in the 90s, but sort of in the mid 2000s, it sort of lost its way. So by the time I kind of came on board, um, I already had my heroes that I looked up to. And trying to kind of bring that back into present day media, basically. Um, so fashion journalism in particular in New Zealand is very small. Uh, it's a small group of people and as Doris is saying, it's, it's very hard to infiltrate sometimes but I've managed to kind of find my way in these spaces to try and introduce people to my culture, um, try and have fashion imagery that reflects the way that we look as, as Pacific Islanders. You know, we are a Pacific Island country and a lot of people forget that. Um, and the biggest Polynesian city in the world. So I think when it comes to anything in media, if you're not reflecting the times or the, the way that people look, um, I try and make sure that my family has someone that they can see in the pages of the magazine too, you know? And I think in predominantly Western fashion, you don't get to see a lot of that. Um, so I've just been very fortunate to try and carve my way through our little industry and, oh, yeah. and tell our stories yeah. through imagery, through words, um, and it's been, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> I think it hasn't been easy for, and it still isn't easy, oh. but there's been a little bit of progress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, um, um, 
you know that, that that's the sort of essence of it is um, a, a, a lot of the people that I've had conversations with in, in within this um, project have said that that what brought them for, to fashion was that um, the the clothes that were in the shops didn't speak to who they were they they, they didn't represent who they were so um, making uh, providing an image for people so they can see themselves so yes. that's that's been your um, your goal I suppose and you've just done it in some incremental steps yeah um, so you could tell us about this some um, this piece that's uh, uh, on the yeah. screen moment. so this is a, from 2012 and this is canvas magazine which is a supplement on the Saturday in the Herald um, and I remember even then uh, a lot of questions were raised in the newsroom about what it was um, but to me it was quite a personal thing because it was my grandmother's um, fine mat. Um, and it's a Karen Walker suit. So it's kind of mixing in unexpected treasures like that. And um, for me it was always important to try and uh, add a little bit of personal touches to the work, yep. Yep. which I try and continue to do. Yeah, it's interesting because you, you read sometimes the labels and there's a thing in there that says stylist's own. Yeah. <laughs> stylist owns Dan some, Dan's little, um, little inputs. Yeah, yeah and I guess the main thing for me is to try and elevate our people so that it's not tokenized. Yep. We are just part of the culture. Um, so when you introduce parts of your culture into the predominantly Western context, um, you just normalize it. Mm -hmm. It becomes part of the conversation um, and people see themselves reflected. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was one example. Oh, yeah. So the next photo is, uh, was in, uh, back one please, Natalie. Um, the, 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 the um, back one. <laughs> so this um, photo is here because um, it's a, it was an inspiration for Dan to do a, a whole, um, Story, fashion story, yes. yeah. So um, in 2020 we launched our first quarterly version of Viva, which is coming up to its 10th this summer. And I was inspired by Sunday best dressing in the Polynesian um, community, which is very much a part of any person's community really, but for Pacific Islanders it's particularly special. Um, because it's the day of the week that's the most important to our families, we come together we have big lunches together, um, church services go on, you have White Sunday. Um, so for the first quarterly magazine, I thought what a great way to celebrate who we are by celebrating Sunday best dressing. And I also asked uh, Courtney Cena Meredith, who's a brilliant poet and writer, to write a few words about her experience growing up dressing up on Sunday mm. um, and so the casting was really important we had Pacifica models um, and the photographer was Hohua Ropate Kurene who's an up-and-coming queer indigenous photographer based in Christchurch so to me it's important to have not only representation in the pages but also behind the scenes as well so if you're not hiring people in our communities then what's the point so they have to be part of the conversation and they also have to be part of pushing things forward yep. so for the longest time in fashion magazines commissioning freelancers went to predominantly white creatives so today it's it's kind of opening up men. slowly <laughs> white creative white men. creative men yes <laughs> but um now that's slowly opening up and to me, this, this shoot really represents, you know, in front of the camera, behind the camera, mm -hmm. telling our stories um, in a way that's elevated. Yep. yep. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's high fashion. There's, there's this sort of um, false assumption that um, uh, fashion with a capital F is, uh, you know, is worthy, um, but that's always Western. Yeah. And um, whereas... Um, Sunday Best, Sunday Best is actually a very good example of uh, of fashion uh, in within another uh, within another culture because Sunday Best is not um, it's not fixed either. It's mm. really it's quite competitive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all the mothers and the aunts, especially, like love to compete with each other. Who has the best looking hat? Um, who has the best looking um, poletasi, which is yeah. a two piece set? 
Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just part of the performance of fashion, which, mm. you know, mm. I think everybody loves. There's an aspect of dressing up that we all identify with. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, I think the next slide is, um, God, well, let's talk about um, Tony, who's here, and, uh, oh, uh, five minutes, good, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Benji. Benji's on my timer. Cool. timer. Um, so would you like to um, talk a little bit about this? Yeah, I mean, this is, um, we invited the House of Amman to basically celebrate who they are. And as, you know, leaders in, in the ballroom scene and the ballroom community. Um, and we got a lot of kickback from a lot of our readers who weren't quite sure what this meant, but it was, um, yeah, it's, 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 again, it was photographed by Hohoro Patikurene. Um, and in the center there, you have JC Tanuvasa, who is the house mother. And it really is, again, about elevating our people and our communities so that they are part of the culture, rather than being seen as yeah, other. French. Yeah, you know, honouring, honouring um, people's, um, people's uh, relationship to um, yep. to clothing and um, uh, and indeed um, including them in the uh, fashion conversation of Aotearoa. Yeah, I mean yep. the ballroom culture, so much of culture takes from those communities. Mm -hmm. So it's that was kind of a way of giving back and saying thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, House of Amman is going to um, do a performance for us uh, a little bit later uh, later on. Awesome. And uh, we'll have a conversation too about the the clothing and their um, their their own ideas about what um, what they wear. But you've gone even um, e even further than um, uh, than uh, than uh, bringing uh, bringing these. Or well, well, actually, one of the things I'd love to talk to you about very briefly is because um, I'm on time um, is the uh, the response that you've got. So you said you've had some. Yeah, I think um, when you. When you do push boundaries a little bit, you are going to push buttons, especially uh, just sort of the feedback in the emails that we get every week, every other week. Um, I think one of the first ones, someone emailed about the use of the word Aotearoa and how they'd stop subscribing to the magazine. Um, another email was from someone that said the magazine was too native. So I think you're always going to get criticism like that. But I, when those emails come through, I tend to smile because it's sort of, it's, it's that insecurity. You've got a response, there's a response, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's no there's, a, fact, there's, yeah. there's a point to the work that's being received. Yeah, but ha have, how have you found that working within, um, uh, within the, the mainstream media and, and the very conservative mainstream media, mm. has there been pressure to dial back to, uh, to no, surprising, up. surprisingly, I mean, for Viva, we're quite unique. We've got a very dedicated team of specialists, and we're all supportive of each other. Um, but I, there hasn't been any kickback internally. I think we're slowly seeing that other magazines are becoming mm -hmm. a lot more progressive too. So yeah. I think you just have to set the tone, and then everything else will follow on after yeah. that, and hope for the best. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been great. <laughs> I've for me, it's um, I've seen that sort of tra you know that sort of transition over sort of ten years mm. of, you know, um, being able to sneak in a little bit of um, uh, foliage or uh, Pacific jewellery yes. or um, to uh, I suppose sort of full frontal confrontation with uh, real people, the real size and shape. And gender expressions of mm. everyone in the, in Aotearoa, and I I think that the conversations that you've had in Viva have have been the things that have um, yeah just shifted what people understand yeah. us to be. Yeah, and it's got to come from an authentic place as well, otherwise people will see through that. Mm. Um, but yeah, as you say, a lot of adornment is quite an easy way to introduce that into the pages mm. without it being too confronting. So oceanic adornment has been a really big passion of mine and something that my grandmother collects. So I slowly put pieces here and there and then you kind of form a relationship with the reader that they are ready to sort of have 
those uh, bigger conversations. Those bigger conversations, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the, just the last one that I would like um, mm. to, um, to show in there is indeed that um, you know, uh, Auckland's a very um, uh, Pacifica, it's the biggest Pacific city. Yes. But it's also uh, home to a whole lot of other, um, a whole other diaspora. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, you have given space also to, um, to that. So um, I'd love to just, just move through. This is lovely. I love the street ones. So I'm a big fan of street photography. <laughs> the diaspora ones. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've worked with Muslim models, we've worked with uh, Indian, uh, Chinese models, and a lot of those times you sort of want to bring them in and make sure that they look like they own what they're wearing. Um, that's really important to me in terms of styling. And, I mean, we worked with um, Roxy Mohebi, who's a actress and a model as well of Iran heritage, Persian heritage, and a lot of her conversations were around her hair, her relationship with her hair. So we invited her to kind of um, collaborate, you know, and mm -hmm. I think it's really important to collaborate with the, the models that you work with. They, they can't just be um, clothes horses anymore. Mm -hmm. They've got to be part of the creative process too. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to what Janine was saying about street casting and, you know, having people that mean something wearing those clothes um, because it's their spirit that inhabits what they're wearing. Thank you. Beautiful. Dan, cool. thank you so much. Okay? <laughs> thank you so much for your work. Keep doing it. Thanks, Doris. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh.